Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from Homesite. Today we're going to be talking about RF. We're going to be talking about what it is, where we find it, how we use it in Home Assistant with one of these, a Sonoff RF bridge. We're going to be flashing it today with Taz Motor and then we're going to be setting it up. Let's go! So we've got our Home Assistant and we want to start connecting devices. So RF, wireless, obvious choice. Nice and easy, simple installation. But what is RF? So if we take a look at this, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Now I'm not going to give you a physics lesson, but I do want to talk about this really, really quickly. You can see on the very left hand side, we've got really long, slow waves, and they are as tall as buildings. On the right hand side, we've got our gamma rays, and they're as small as molecules or atoms or nuclei of, of atoms. And in the middle, we've got this radio wave stuff. <clears throat> well, that's what we're talking about. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit, really, really quickly, about radio. Radio, AM radio, remember that one? It was all slow and poor quality, only mono, we didn't have stereo back then. Then we had FM radio, we start to bring in better quality sound, we had stereo, and we had digital radio. Now I've got the frequencies up on the screen here. You'll notice they're getting faster and faster, or higher and higher frequencies, shorter amounts of wavelength in the same amount of space. Why is that important? Well, AM, consider that to be radio frequency, 433 megahertz, slow, but it'll still do the job, right? We've got our FM radio, which is getting a bit, bit faster. Now that's likely to be our Wi-Fi, our 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And then we've got our digital radio, higher again, maybe our five gigahertz Wi-Fi. We're getting faster and faster. So why is that important? What I want to say is that it's all radio frequency. So we've got our home assistant that's connected to Wi-Fi, radio frequency still, but 2.4 gigahertz to, or 5 gigahertz. They use both protocols in, in most cases. And we've got our slower devices, things like doorbells. They don't need, you know, 55 meg of data download. It's a single alarm. It's a single pulse. It's a single signal to say, ring the doorbell. It's really, really simple. It doesn't need to be have that high data rate. We might have a door open, door open, door closed. Again, it's not going to need a m massive amount of data. We might have a motion detector. Again, I've seen motion. There you go. What else are you going to do with it? Well, but so these things here on the left-hand side, they work within that 433 megahertz band, probably. There will be other devices that work on 300 and something megahertz. There's quite a wide range, which is what I'm showing on that first page. There's a, there's a massive wide range of radio frequency, so just because you've got something that says radio frequency doesn't mean it's gonna work. It might have other encryption things like rolling codes. For example, you're not gonna wanna send the same old code out to your car to unlock it, because someone could sniff that and mirror it, use it to unlock your car. You don't want that, same with garage doors. They're radio frequency, but there's a rolling code there. There's some sort of algorithm that, that changes that for you. So, but in some cases, things like doorbells, door, motion sensors, door sensors, we can use them. We can integrate them into Home Assistant really, really simply. The problem is we've got Wi-Fi on one range and RF or 433 megahertz on the other range. So what do we need? We need a Sonoff RF bridge. Now, first things first, you can buy it, you can use it straight out of the box. You can use it with this Sonoff um, app. I think it's called U-Link or e it's E-W-E Link, U-Link. Now, that means you've got to use a cloud. So, and you can integrate that into Home Assistant, but personally, I like Tasmota. Now, Tasmota is going to allow you to use it totally offline. It's going to allow the Sonoff RF bridge to talk directly to Home Assistant using something called MQTT. So before we get flashing this with Tasmota, there's one final thing I want to say. Why would you use 433 megahertz over Wi-Fi or Zigbee or Z-Wave or any other wireless protocol that you can find? Well, for me, it's the battery life. The battery life in 433 megahertz is so, so small that you'll barely need to change the batteries ever. In fact, there's one device on the market that I noticed that doesn't even use a battery. It's a doorbell, and it uses the energy that you push in by pressing the doorbell to send that signal out. Now, Zigbee and Z-Wave, they are much, much better than Wi-Fi, because, but Wi-Fi uses a lot of power to start up and connect to that network. So that's the killer for me, is battery life. Would I use an RF bridge? Would I use an RF device with a really high security? If I was working in a prison, would I recommend they use that? No. 
there's not enough security around it. In fact, I wouldn't recommend using wireless at all. But for our simple home environments, RF is absolutely fine. So I've already talked way too much, so let's grab our son off RF bridge and let's go. So we have our Sonoff RF bridge, brand new in the box. So let's open it up and take a look. Not a lot of packaging. Some manuals to go with it by the looks of it. So here we go, here's the, here's the main thing. Not a lot to it really. Bit of information on the back. We've got one USB port there and a reset button. Cool. Some user manuals. This one looks to be in German. Yep, all in German. Oh well, we're not gonna need that anyway. Works with Alexa, Google Home, Google Nest, if this then that, as long as uh, you've paid your money and taken your choice, or only use three applets. Warranty card, well, we're about to take the lid off anyway, so we don't need that. Okay, so let's have a look. Right, let's start taking the thing apart, shall we? So you can see these four little rubber feet. They need to be taken off, just with a little screwdriver, and they're just stuck to the top of the screw. So, so I'm just gonna remove them quickly. Phillips, and then we can get to screws. remove those screws. So I'm just gonna stick the little rubber feet just inside the screws, just so we don't lose them. And then Great, so let's get inside. The top of the screws afterwards. So you can see the little antennas, one RF, one for Wi-Fi. And if we can just get this little board out. I'm just gonna test it. I just want to make sure that it powers up before I mess with it. Here we go, there's a little green light pad. And you should be able to see the Wi-Fi blue LED flashing up on the top right hand corner there. And if I hold it a bit nearer, you should be able to see that nice and clearly. So we've got two LEDs at the bottom, one Wi-Fi LED, one RF LED. Wi-Fi flashes blue and the RF flashes red whenever it receives a signal or sends a signal. So before we flash our, our Sonoff RF bridge, we need a way of connecting it to our PC. Now I use one of these. This is a USB to serial adapter and some header pins. So, if we take a look at this, I've quickly flashed up eBay. If you search for FT232RL, you'll find a little USB to TTL serial adapter. They're only a few pounds, a few dollars, wherever you are. Grab one of those. These are nice and simple. I mean, that one's from China, £1.77, free postage. Next thing you're gonna need is a way of connecting the other end to the Sonoff RF bridge. Now I'll show you in a second, there's some tiny little holes on there. Now I use these little tiny header pins, which I'll show you better in the video in a sec. Now, it's these, basically. I've chopped up some of them and I've soldered them on. Now I put a bit of heat shrink on there as well, um, just to make it look a bit nicer, give it a bit more strength. And so all I've done is put a pair of snips um, here, and so I've chopped them, put a little, uh, and then created individual pins, and I use those. And the last thing is you need this wire between. Now you could solder directly onto the board. You, I used. I pulled out an old PC from that I had kicking around in the garage, and I chopped up some of these sort of like the, the bio, the, some of the pins. So I chopped up some of these carefully, um, and I used those so they're now connectors connectorized onto there, so I can move them around onto any ports that I want. So here's our uh, Sonoff RF bridge, nice and close up. Now we're going to have to remove this little white pad. We've got to lift this up. Now it's stuck on with a bit of foam, so. Uh, I'm just going to grab a little screwdriver and prise that up just to break the seal from the glue. Now be careful lifting this up because it is bending two little wires but it's okay to do a couple of times. Now here you can see the holes that we're going to need to put our pins into and the little switch there as well. So first of all I'm going to move the switch into the off position and then I'm going to take my wires and I'm going to put them in. Now we've got the 3.3 volt, the VCC, to the very top hole. We've got the transmit, the receive, and the ground. So I'm going to get all those connected in. There you go. 
So I'll pop a link to this down in the description anyway. So next thing we need to do is plug in our USB cable into our serial adapter. Then when you turn, when you plug it into your laptop or your computer, you need to hold down this button and release after a couple of seconds. Next thing we need to do is make sure we've got the right version of Tasmota. So if you search for Tasmota releases, it's that top link, but I'll put a link down in the description as well. Now I made a little mistake when I downloaded it first, because I thought I'm in the UK, I'll download Tasmota-UK. Now these are all languages. UK is not the UK, it's the Ukraine. You just want the Tasmota.bin, assuming that you want your English to be your native language. So we've got everything connected, we've got our Tasmota.bin, now we need to get a way of putting the Tasmota.bin firmware onto our Sonoff RF bridge. We need a node flasher. Now I'm going to be showing you an example on my Mac, but there's something very, very similar on Windows and I'll put links in the description below. So this is our node flasher. First of all, we need to select the device. Now if you have a look in here, you should find that when you plug in the serial adapter, it should then appear. So you can see this extra one at the bottom has now appeared. You can use the auto, but I like to choose, make sure we've got the right one. You're going to choose your firmware, so that's that tasmota.bin file that we've downloaded. So we're just going to select that and press open. We're going to leave the board rate on 15 or 115200, change it to dual output, and I'm going to hit erase flash. As soon as we've done that, you're going to hit the flash node MCU button. Now you need to go off and like my page and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any more videos. So now that that's done, that's great. We've now flashed our Sonoff RF bridge with Tasmota. So what we can do next is disconnect those cables. I would unplug this from the USB port first. And then we need to make that sure we switch that switch back over to the normal position. We can bend the little light pad back down. Cool, we've done it, well done. So if you've made it this far, that's great. And probably means that you've flashed your Sonoff RF bridge with Tasmota and you're ready to start configuring. So what we're going to do, we're going to do that on the next video. So keep an eye out for that one. If you like my video, that'll tell YouTube how cool it was. And if you subscribe, you'll make sure you catch the next one as well. Thank you. I've been Simon from Homesite. See you next time.